Welcome friends at GNK. Good to be back with you. What I thought we would talk about this round is sulfur on soybeans. I know it probably seems like old news or we're beating a dead horse, but the reason why we're talking about it is because of the importance of sulfur. We used to never have to worry about it because we got it for free. The amendment to the Clean Air Act that they made back in 1990 kind of put the end to all sulfur deposition in the atmosphere. And we've just burned it up over the course of time, but now we have to be thinking about it and be worried about it. And we have for a number of years, but as time goes on, the demand gets higher and higher. This data is 10 year old data already, but 10 years ago, the time leading up to that was a decline in sulfur levels. Back in the early 2000s, our soil test levels used to be in the 30, 40, 50 parts per million range, which by the way, if I could pick my number, that's exactly what I would want. But over the course of time of no free deposition and using it up by crop production, our values are declining. And so we saw a 10 year straight decline. So 10 years ago, we saw a lot of sulfur values around 10 to 15. And I used to think, well, that's as low as low can get. Well, now they're even, they're even half of that. So as a result, our demand for sulfur keeps going up and it keeps increasing. It takes about 20 to 25 pounds of sulfate sulfur to support a crop. Now, yeah, yields can dictate that exact number to some degree, but that's about what it takes to support a crop through a growing season. So we have to get that from somewhere. Soils with an organic matter of around 3% will mineralize about 2.4% of that into sulfur annually. Just a perspective, a 3% organic matter soil will give you about seven pounds of sulfur. Now that's over the course of a year, not in May, June, July when you really want it, but that's over the course of a year. The moral of the story is here, the higher your organic matter, the more oxidation you will get from that into sulfate sulfur. The lower your organic matter, the less you'll get. So those of you that have sandier soils or low OMs, you're naturally not going to get additional sulfur coming to you. Also, crops can only utilize sulfur in the sulfate form. It's an anion negative charge. Your soil is negatively charged. So they don't hold each other at all. What happens with sulfur is, is it moves in the profile and it moves particularly with water. So water will drive sulfur down. So while our soil samples will capture the top six or eight inches, it doesn't capture what's below that because that's what the instrumentation is calibrated towards. It's not calibrated towards a 12 inch deep sample or a sample below that. So while our soil reports content, continually show us that we have little to no sulfur and or levels are declining, there could be additional sulfur below the old plow pan because it will move down in the profile. So bear in mind, even though soil values are low and continue to be low, there could be some residual effects of sulfur deeper in the profile that the crop can get during the year. But nonetheless, it takes about 20 to 25 pounds of sulfur to support a crop. The question we get and that we question ourselves is we've tried sulfur or we've made sulfur applications and it, it might have responded here, but there was no response over here. So what, what's really going on? What's driving that? I need to share what Sean Castile has done at Purdue over the last several years. He has implemented sulfur in the system ahead of soybeans. And here's what's kind of bled out of the data. That's kind of the cream that's risen to the top. The early planted beans have responded quite well as compared to later planted beans. When we think back to when we did make sulfur applications, were those applied to early planted beans? Were they applied to late planted beans? Were they applied to higher organic matter, lower organic matter? What were soil temps? But I think the bottom line comes down to what's the best place to put your money? And so the data has a very compelling argument that any soybeans planted prior to middle of May, and I'm gonna say May 10th, bode a very good response to sulfur or sulfur applications, particularly 
AMS or pelletized gypsum. And so that to me is what you need to focus your attention to. Later plant of beans on the other hand, so that would be Memorial Day or later, particularly getting into June, we're seeing little response, maybe a bushel or two to no response. So the summary on that is to, in the short game, target your early planted beans. One, and I think a major component is soil temperature. So naturally, if we're planting in April and sometimes early May, we have cool soil temps in the 50s, sometimes less. And when we have cool soil temps, we are not oxidizing the sulfur from the OM. It takes temperatures of 80 degrees outside temperatures that translates into warmer soils to get that process started. So when we plant early, we don't have a sulfur uh, value coming from OM versus if we're putting it there commercially in the form of a commercial fertilizer or a gypsum or something like that, we're physically putting there, so we're compensating for that. Another contributing factor is, as you know, soybeans are daylight sensitive. So they mature based on day length. Beans that are planted earlier will vegetate longer than beans planted later because once the days get shorter, that, that triggers an internal mechanism in the soybean plant to switch from vegetative to reproductive stages. So the longer that plant's in the vegetative stage, to me, gives it a chance to capture more sulfur, utilize more sulfur. Sulfur is a catalyst for cation reactions in the plant, particularly calcium and potassium. So it gives it a longer opportunity to benefit from the sulfate portion versus the later plant that doesn't have a vegetative window near as long as an earlier planted soybean. So most of you know, and most of you that are willing to plant early, which by the way, we, we really support early planted beans. You have very little risk to plant beans early because you have time to fix them and calendars on your side and the, the cost to do so isn't as great as a corn acre. You need to be thinking about where you're gonna plant early, what acres open the door for you to be there first. Those would be my first targeted acres for sulfur. Those of you that applied pelletized gypsum, for example, or elemental sulfur last fall, your stage is already set. That's a great position to be in. We're the second warmest winter on record and a dry winter. That bodes very well for retaining sulfur. So that stage is set for this year. Now, different falls and winters can dictate that, but that's a great position to be in. Those that don't have that on or in place have not lost either because you now have an opportunity to go target those acres with sulfur. And that form could be ammonium sulfate or pelletized gypsum would be my two favorite options sitting here in March leading into the season. You could always target your first and early planted acres because you know what that's gonna be. You know where you go first. If you don't wanna cover every acre and kind of dilute that investment a little bit, you can cross that bridge as it comes and kind of line that up as the season rolls along because it can be applied all the way up to planting. It can be applied after planting if you're capable of doing that. But the bottom line is the data is very supportive of the early planted soybeans. However, I like to see sulfur in the system no matter what. It's just your biggest gain is early planted beans. we're only looking for 20 to 25 pounds of sulfur. So doing some math, that to me is either using gypsum, pelletized gypsum or ammonium sulfate. In my opinion, those are equals in terms of what their opportunity is to you. But I would be thinking around 150 pounds of pelletized gypsum and 120 pounds of ammonium sulfate. Those kind of values will give you a 20 to 25 pound sulfur load to equip you for the season. Hopefully this is of value to you. I want you to be thinking about sulfur. We've talked about it for a number of years and 
Hopefully you can carry this forward to better your operation in light of tighter margins and lower commodity prices. Let's, let's be thinking where we can best spend our time. We appreciate your time. As always, reach out to us at the office. Call the office. Call any one of us. Um, we want to be available for questions. Um, if we don't know the answer, we make it up anyway, but we want you to call us. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video. Go get your little D17 from 1963 and hook it up to your little <whistles> spreader and get some sulfur applied.